Hello guys. So before we proceed forward with the reflexion agent system, there is one more thing that we have to learn about, which is how can we get structured outputs from LLMs. This is something that I did not get a chance to cover in my Langchain course. So let us actually take a look at it and let's look at some slides right now. So it is often useful to have a model return output that matches a specific schema that we define. So if you can imagine, this is what software engineering is all about, right? So we're always going to be dealing with structured data. So there's going to be some object or in a, in a JSON format, there are some properties that we extract and we do some manipulation. We, the way we put it in the database is going to be in some structured format. But so far we've only been dealing with LLMs that just give out some random string that we can't really do anything solid with, right? So that is something that we can change. We can actually tell the LLM, give it in a structured format, give it in a JSON with these exact properties. So we can actually do that. Okay. So I'll give you an example. So let's say, you know, um, uh, I'm saying, okay, tell me a joke about cats. Okay. So the LLM normally without any structured outputs, what it's going to do, it's just going to give, uh, you know, a string saying that, okay, the, here's, here's a joke, right? But what if I tell the LLM also give it to me in this particular output? Okay, so I want a JSON in, in that JSON, I want a setup punchline rating and I want these values, not exactly these values, but this is what the output of the LLM is going to be. Okay, so why was the cat sitting on the computer? This is going to be the setup of the joke. The punchline is going to be because it wanted to keep an eye on the mouse, right? Okay, this is funny. And also I'm also telling it give a rating as well and give it to me in this exact format so that I can take that object that you give the LLM is going to give and let's say put it in the database or, you know, do something with it or show it to the user, right? So we have, uh, it's, it's not just this, we also have options to get outputs in formats such as JSON, dictionary, string, YAML, HTML, right? Okay. So there's a bunch of different formats that we can actually force the LLM to provide value, provide the content in. Okay. So that is what we are going to be. Uh, learning how to do that in this particular section because this is an important thing that we have to understand so that we can easily learn the reflexion agent architecture pattern. All right. So the f there's a couple of types. Uh, there's a couple of ways in which we can actually you know force the LLM to give structured outputs, and the first one is going to be using pydantic models. Okay, so if you're somebody who's new to Python, let's quickly, I'll give you quickly go through, you know, what pydantic models are and how it can be actually used in the context of Langchain and Langgraph. So a pydantic is a Python library that helps define data structures. It acts like a blueprint for data. It uses Python's type hints like string, integer to enforce correct data types. So how does it work in Langchain? So we basically define a class with the fields we need. So let's say we need name, property, capital, and language. We also specify, you know, give some description for each of those properties. And we can use this particular method. This is going to be the magic method. So we can use this with structured output to tell the LLM to follow this particular format. So let me give you a quick example as well. So yeah. So you can see that initially I have imported, you know, the base model and the field from Pydantic. Okay. And we've also initialized a model. You don't have to use open AI. We can always use other chart models as well. And it is going to work perfectly fine. Later on in the course, we are going to be switching between a bunch of different models. We are going to be using, you know, chart, uh, grok. We are going to be using, uh, uh, we are going to be using llama models and a bunch of different things, but no difference. All that you have to do is swap this chat model with another chat model. That is it. All right. So now that we have a model initialized, we are going to be defining a pydantic model. Okay. So let us say, uh, you know, the question that I want to ask LLM is tell me about France. Okay. Something very dumb, but the point that I want you to take away from this is let's say this is the question that I want to ask the LLM and I don't want the LLM to just give a string response. I want the LLM to give a response in a structured format. So I want the response to have a name, a language and a capital. Okay. So in this case, the name is going to be, I'm going to give a description as well using this field class. So I'm saying name of the country. I'm giving additional information to the LLM. So. Uh, language is going to be the language of the country, capital, the capital of the country. 
okay and also we are going to be giving additional information at the top right here okay saying information about a country so these are all very important i'll tell you exactly how these actually play out in the api call that we make to the llm in just a minute but this is how we actually define the pydantic model okay so we have the name we are importing the base model uh, the description we are also giving descriptions for each of the properties and also the data types for each of those properties all of these are very important so now that we have the pedantic model we are going to make use of the with structured output method that is going to be available in the llm and uh, we are passing in this thing and that is it so now we have a slightly supercharged llm that we can invoke on okay it's not going to be a normal llm this llm now has internally what is happening is we are this is going to be considered as a tool okay so this is going to be considered as a tool for the llm now this tool is basically made available to this particular llm the structured llm and we are also forcing the llm to only use this particular tool okay so if this does not make sense don't worry we are going to be deep diving we are going to be learning all sorts of different things about tools and tool calling and all these different things but for now just know that this is a tool that we are providing to the llm using this particular method and we are also forcing the llm to only use this particular tool okay so now we have the structured llm and if we now were to invoke and pass in this string we are going to get back in a very structured way okay the response is going to be very structured in this exact thing so let me go ahead and run this block so right here you can see that we are getting a runnable binding and uh, in this runnable binding you should be able to see this is not really necessary for you to know right now we don't want to complicate it but we can see that we have this output format we have the schema right so if i were to uh, invoke this run this now this is going to be the response from the llm so now you can see this is going to be a pedantic model and inside of which we have the name language and capital okay so next step let me also show you how the request payload looks like when we make the call to the llm and also the response payload all right guys so so this is going to be a very uh, simple sample request payload okay so this is what langchain sends to the open ai api so you can see that we have the messages this is what we provided no difference but in addition to this there are two other things okay that are going to be sent okay so in this tools we are providing okay so you can see that this is a single object so if you remember this pedantic model that we wrote that is going to be available as a tool to the llm for the llm to call okay so this tool is going to have the type function and the name is going to be country okay so it is basically going to take the this is going to be considered as the name of the tool and whatever we provided here is going to be considered as the description of the tool that is how the llm knows we have to use this particular tool okay and now we have this important uh, property called parameters inside of which we have these properties this is very important okay so it's we are basically saying we absolutely need this uh, name okay so the name is going to be type string description is going to be this same thing for language and capital and we are also specifying that these three things are required as well okay so this is this is how so basically whatever we write here this is how it is going to get converted okay when we actually make the api call to the llm all right so perfect and we are also finally okay so let me close this let me close this so now we saw that we are making this particular pedantic model as a tool and we are making it available to the llm that is one thing secondly we are also you know we are also saying the tool choice absolutely have to be so when we say tool choice what it means is you don't have a choice llm you have to use this particular tool you have to use this particular schema and whatever response you're getting you have to absolutely use it so that is what this means and we are just uh, you know giving the same name um, uh, so that we can uh, the llm can refer back to it that is it okay so perfect uh, so now that we know how the sample request payload looks like this is how the response is going to look like don't don't get confused about all of this but this is how you are going to get the response okay so you can see that the response from the llm is going to be a json as well but it is going to have the name language and capital and what ends up happening is after lan chain lan graph our application right after this 
you know uh, this information is received by our application it is going to parse it okay so all of that is going to be taken care of by this particular method okay so it is going to parse it it's going to convert it into a pedantic model right it's going to validate as well okay so that is one thing that you have to remember when we are dealing with a pedantic model so you know during the conversion process it is also going to validate if each property is actually present and all the data types are all matching and all of that it's just going to make sure that you know name is present language is present capital is present and also you know is this a string is this a string is this a string as well so it's going to do all of the validations if at all the validations fail it is all automatically going to throw an error that we can easily catch and then do something do a fallback with it okay so this is the first way of doing it okay so i hope that was clear to you if at all you have any questions uh, let me know in the comments or you can just go to google type structured outputs lang chain and you can go through the documentation as well and it would make complete sense to you okay so this is the first way of doing it so what if you know you don't really want the validations part right okay so you just want to tell the llm give the response to me in this particular schema so in this case if you don't want the additional validations you can always go for coming down you can always go for type dict okay so before we use the base model from the pedantic but this time we can always use the type dict so basically type dict is uh, you know uh, a python class uh, you you are basically creating a schema for a dictionary and you're saying okay this is the type data type of this property this is the data type of this property etc etc so right here you can see that we are defining the schema this time using the type dict it's going to have okay this is going to be a joke to tell the user we have a setup punchline and rating and this is how we you know um, give additional information so we can actually use the annotated class from typing and we can use this to provide additional information about this particular property the first the this thing that we are providing is going to be the data type the second argument is going to be uh, the default value that we assign to this particular property in case the llm does not generate a property okay so in this case we are not providing a default value the third one is going to be the description we are giving more information about this property so that the llm knows exactly what this property should hold okay what value it should hold i hope that makes sense so this is one way of doing it uh, okay so we can also uh, you know um, for the punch line we are doing the same thing for the rating we are basically just saying that you know this is not absolutely important rating can be like omitted so in this case we are making this int as optional we are giving a default value of none and we are also saying how funny the joke is from 1 to 10 okay and finally now that we have the uh, the class ready we are providing the same thing here and the structured llm is going to invoke it and now when we run it let's give it a few seconds okay great so you can see that we are getting the exact same thing okay so we are getting setup punchline rating perfect okay so this is the second way of doing it okay great so let us look at the third way of doing it and that is basically just by providing a json schema so we have to give a title and a description so these are the three properties that we need in the final dict that it provides so here we have the type string description punchline to the joke so this is actually basically the equivalent to what we're doing here but without the class and we're also saying the, these are the two things that are required the rating is not required so if we pass it the same thing here if i run this i should get the same thing okay so why was the cat sitting on the computer punchline is going to be okay because it wanted to keep an eye on the mouse okay rating perfect okay great so now i hope that you understand how we can actually use this pedantic model how we can use the json schema or how we can use the type dict uh, class to actually tell the llm to provide its output in a structured way so this is particularly important because in the next uh, you know a section that we are going to be dealing with where we will be building the reflexion agent system there we will actually make use of the first type which is going to be the pedantic model okay so there i might not be using this particular method 
uh, I might be, you know, explicitly providing the tool. Okay, this uh, I'm going to consider this as a tool. I'm going to be providing it to the LLM, you know, directly like this. But the underlying mechanism is the absolute same thing. So if you recall the, the request sample that we looked at, it is going to be the same exact thing, no different. Okay, so I hope this uh, made sense to you. I'll see you in the next section.